Here are the top ways, pros and cons, of looking for varieties and errors. Stay tuned. I want to introduce those of you who do not know. Here's my website, PortsmouthCoinShop.com. It is my coin shop website, and I do have um, inventory up. I've added a few more, and I'm always adding inventory. And we do have uh, some 90% left. Also, we have uh, Silver Eagles and Silver Dollars. So you can just scroll down through here, and you can check that out. I know I'm going to get a lot of questions on mint errors from this video. But what I would rather for you to do is after you're done watching this video is to come down here to this link right here and click on it. Then come over here to the playlist tab. I have playlist on mint errors and non-mint errors on Jefferson Nichols and consent variety guides should you submit your coins for grading. I implore you, encourage you to spend a few hours looking through these videos and watching them and learning. I created them for that purpose. I created them for all the questions I've been asked over the years. And it's worth spending a few hours doing that instead of looking through more coins because you're going to learn some things and you're going to learn what not to waste your time on and what is a non-mint error and what's it look like and what is an error. So I do encourage you to do that. So I know a lot of you who look through coins would like to know some secrets, maybe, maybe some pros and cons of where to look and what to look for. And most of you are probably looking through pocket change. You're getting rolls at the bank. Now I know currently under current conditions, some of this is going to have to wait. As far as finding stuff in your circulation, you know, it's going to be very difficult. And when you do, it's usually going to be damaged. It's usually going to have, be, have some type of issue, and it's going to be circulated. Most varieties that are circulated are not worth even messing with. They're just cool to find, maybe. But also the problem with finding them in circulation is that you're going to find all kinds of little anomalies, issues on your coins, contact marks, uh, different things like that, and dye deterioration once it wears down on the coin because of circulation wear. It can look like uh, doubling. And you know, all those little things come into play. So unless it's going to be an extremely rare variety of some sort, like let's say an 82 uh, dime without a mint mark, then you want to look for it. Now, let's also remember that there's all, that's the only one that's in circulation that is worth finding as far as no mint marks concerned, because mint marks weren't put on coins until 1980 when they're from the Philadelphia Mint. So a P wasn't put on them. So you can find all kinds of coins without mint marks. That's very normal. Now, it's best to get a book. It's best to strike it rich with pocket change. Go to error-reference.com or go to um, Wexler's DoubleDie.com website. Koneka Variety Vista is another place to go, another website, and to look for the errors that are worth looking for. You know, and sold auctions is going to tell you which ones is the best. Um, PCGS uh, CoinFax, as far as their price guides are concerned, it will show you the ones that are worth the most in the lower grades. That's the ones you want to look for. Circulation to me is like the bottom tier. It's the least place that you should be looking for coins that are worth money. I'm not saying you shouldn't look for them, but you should need to be looking for the main large errors like the 69S double die and, like I said, the 82 no, no P mint mark, that kind of thing. Not just any anomaly. I mean, that's, I see a lot, I get a lot of images sent to me of just anomalies on coins. They're just a waste of time. Just point blank, blunt. They're just a waste of time. You may like them, and some people don't like to hear that, but as a dealer, as a person who's looked through change, you just got to, they're interesting, but they're not worth sending images. They're not worth messing with. You know, they're not going to be worth money. Yeah. Now, the other thing is that um, basically albums. These right here. People who went through their change or went through rolls or went to dealers, they would um, put coins in albums. You can find varieties in these albums, especially when you get into Indian scent albums, uh, Buff uh, Jefferson Nickel albums, and Buffalo Nickel albums. You can find things like, I found a 1919S, uh, what they call two feather. You know, you've got three feathers on the back of the Indian head, okay? And it's right underneath the lower feather there in the hair. Or right at the bottom of the head there, there's a little extra feather. Well, it's not an extra one, but I mean, it's part of the design. If it's not there, then it's called a two feather. You can look the two feather up on coin facts, be just coin facts. You can find um, RPMs and never mint marks like in the Jefferson Nichols and the 42. Those are things that you want to look for 
Typically, they're overlooked in these albums. Sometimes you can find them at antique malls. Sometimes you can find them at garage sales and things like that. And, and even dealer inventory, if they don't care, you know, I would recommend just buying it and not trying to go through them because you're going to have to take the coins out and look at the reverse because that's where a lot of the, some of the errors are going to be, especially mint mark errors. Another thing you can look at is mint sets and proof sets. You know, in the proof sets, look for the no S mint marks and double dice. They tend to be a little more rare. That's what you want to look for in these sets. Don't get me wrong. Do your research. I'm not giving you every little thing to look for, okay? But you just don't want to look for minor anomalies, something missing on the coin, like a, a T in trust or, you know, part of the L missing in liberty on a cent. That kind of stuff is just struck through or uh, where the coin was actually the die was polished down or at least, let's say, refinished after a clash. So th those are stuff you can find all the time. It doesn't matter if it's in a mint set or not. But you can find some double dies and you can find some, you know, different things. Like I actually had a 99S uh, proof set and I found the close A in. It's supposed to be wide on the proofs, okay? And they're supposed to be close after 93 on the business strikes. So you get your proof set and you'll learn all that. I did a video on that to show you and teach you that. Mint sewn bags is another place. That's where you're probably going to find your more dramatic errors at times. Uh, because the dramatic errors, if they get through the Riddler somehow at the Mint, which they use to, you know, for only a certain size coin can fit through those, they're not going to get rolled up because of be a, the wrong size or oblong shaped or something wrong with it, you know, typically. But they can get dumped into a Mint bag. Also, you can find errors. Now, an example of this is that Whenever the 1958 double die, the double die, the only three known, you know, it's worth over three hundred some thousand dollars. One of them sold for, was found in a mint zone bag in Philadelphia, and that's very important to note here. If and I'm sure it's been done, but if you want to find the 1958 double die, your best chance is to be in Philadelphia area and try to find the mint zone bags. I'm sure there's probably this has already it's been so long. I think it was the 60s when that was found. So. You know, the odds of that are probably really slim, but if you want a chance of doing it, that's how you want to find that. So you have to do some research, some footwork. Where were these first found, these varieties that you're looking for? Whether it be the Spear Bison or the Extra Leaf Wisconsin Quarter, you know, look it up, do a little research and find out where it was found first, what mint it came from, what state and all that. And then that's probably more than likely the area that you're going to get it. It's no different than the 2019 W Quarters. You know, they were released to certain banks and everybody was getting to those, going to those towns and those banks trying to find the W quarters. Same thing with these double dies. You've got to do that too. I know mean, after all these years, some of them get mixed around and they'll end up in other places after a while and not detected, but that makes them even more rare to find. So just to kind of give you some pointers on some things and where to find it. And another thing is as far as mint rolls, I mean, if you can find bricks like this, uh, this is the 2009 formative years from the Lincoln Cent. Yeah, that's one place that you can find rolls. If you can find someone who's selling these, they tend to overcharge for these because whenever there's a known error in there, people tend to want to charge you more for this. Um, I can get more roll than selling this brick. And I'll probably end up selling those rolls, put them up on the website, and sell them as unsearched rolls because I can truly say these are unsearched. The box is not even open. But anyways, um, like I said, None of this is easy when it comes to finding something that's worth money, especially in your change. And you're least likely to find it in your change in anything. It's actually better to do research first, like I said. Do a little bit of research. Find out where these were found in the first place. So thanks for watching my latest video. And please hit the sub button. And have a great day.